Well, politics is often described as a team sport, and we're here on the court with Tony Wakeham, who's running for the PC leadership. I want to ask you, basketball, how big of a role has it played in your life? A very significant role, Peter. I've been involved in sport my entire life. And basketball, it was the sport that I chose. And I've been involved with it since I was a player in high school, and then went on to play here at the university as a player. And then from there, turned around and uh, had the opportunity, actually, to represent the province at national competitions. And after my playing days were done, of course, I started coaching. And then when my job took me outside of St. John's, because I moved around a lot in the province, I got involved in the administrative side. So I found myself uh, being the head of the uh, local basketball association and ultimately the president of uh, Canada Basketball for a number of years. But all of that experience gives you the concept of team building and teamwork and what it means to be able to form teams and that's what I bring to this leadership. I have that ability to work with teams. I've been a team player all my life. I've worked with teams all my life. I'm as comfortable in the boardroom as I am on the basketball court and that's that's the reason I think sports play such an integral part in people's lives. It's not just about the physical activity but it's about your mental health and your physical health. Sticking with the sports analogy, uh, the last time you went head-to-head -head for the leadership, you know, you, you weren't able to take home the trophy, you came second. What have you learned since then, and how have you changed since the last time you ran? Well, I think the last time I ran, I was extremely new to politics. I, I did not have a seat in the House of Assembly. I had not been involved in politics before, and I entered the, the race late. And um, to this day, people have told me, had I had a few more weeks, I probably would have won. So this time we, we got out early, and one of the key things is getting a great team around me. And that was, again, one of the things that I've been able to do. I've been able to attract people who have lots of political experience. I've got people around me who have no political experience. The other thing I want to ask you about is a bit about your background in healthcare. Give me an idea, what was your involvement? What, what are some of the roles that you had within the healthcare system? Well, I, I started off actually in the Department of Health at, at the time when we actually had a what they call the Hospital Services Division. And it was interesting because back then, we would be involved in going out to all of the hospitals across the province of Newfoundland and Labrador and doing what we call base staff level reviews. So we were constantly reviewing staffing levels and service needs and all of those things. Nowadays, perhaps if we had to have some of that a few years ago and have those things done, maybe we wouldn't have found ourselves as desperate for staff as we are now. So from there, I wound up uh, go, moving to Clarenville, and I worked at the hospital in Clarenville as assistant executive director in finance and administration. I found myself back in St. John's and ultimately again uh, wound up in the Department of Health as an assistant deputy minister responsible for regional health authorities. So again, traveling all over the province, getting to know people, and it was there that the job came up in uh, Labrador Grenfell as their president and CEO. I applied for the job and I was successful in getting it, and I signed a two-year contract and wound up staying for five. And as you know, when you go to Labrador sometimes, it, 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 you, it brings out that emotion. It's a beautiful place to live and work, and, uh, and you get very attached to it. Okay, now that we've gotten to know a little bit about who you are as a person, I want to talk about some of the politics and policies. And healthcare is obviously a big issue for a lot of people in the province. It's also been a big part of your career. Uh, so uh, give me an idea. What are two changes that you would make in healthcare that you think could have the biggest impact on some of the challenges that we're seeing today? If you start thinking about what can we do right now, today, that would help people, a couple of things that I've outlined so far in my platform is one, the focusing on retention. We have seen a significant number of our nurses, for example, leave permanent full-time jobs to take jobs with agencies. And so why did that happen? You know, those are things that we need to dig into. We need to be talking to people about those type of things. But, but isn't government already addressing that? There's a new contract that pays them more. There's bonuses if you right. go full-time. If you're an experienced nurse, there's They're, bonuses on top of that. They are attempting to do that. But on the, on the, and that's part of the solution, no doubt. But the other part of that is a retention part for the people that are currently enrolled in our systems. And I have suggested to government that right now, any student who is enrolled in a program, a healthcare program that we have a need for in this province, whether it's in a college or a university, they should be offered a full-time job 
as they enter the program, not as they exit the program. The other one that's, uh, that I've talked about a lot, and you'll be familiar with this from your time in Labrador, is medical transportation. Because that is a critical piece when it comes to people being able to access health care in our province. There are too many stories of people choosing or wondering whether they can afford to go to a medical appointment. And I don't think anyone in this province should avoid or be able to not afford to go to a medical appointment to see a specialist. I think that program needs to be 100% funded and people need to understand that. So if you've got to go for cancer care or you've got to travel outside your district, the last thing you need to worry about is whether you can afford to go. Speaking of help, helping people, cost of living is on a lot of people's minds. What do you think the provincial government could be or should be doing in order to address the struggles that people have had dealing with everything from housing to food to you know, energy affordability? Number one, let's start eliminating taxes that hurt people. Sugar tax, you know, it's collected $11 million, but it, there's no evidence that it's, it's improving people's health. There's not one mention in the entire healthcare document that we should implement a sugar tax to make people healthier. That needs to go. The fight against carbon tax. The Liberal government here in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador introduced carbon tax to this province. They didn't fight it right from the beginning. They're now talking about they don't support it. But they introduced it and then they doubled down and actually voted to increase it. That has had a significant impact on the cost of living in this province and contributed to inflation. But, but even if you were Premier tomorrow, you couldn't stop that tax. It's a federal tax. The federal government's put it in place. And we cannot stop the tax, but we, can, we will not stop arguing and fighting to have it removed because that's the role of the government to do that and continue to bring that forward. On a measurable side of things, there are things the government has done. For example, we currently have a reduction in our gas tax. We need to continue on with that. That's scheduled to come off. We know that uh, other increases that government could do. I've talked about the idea that we need a, a, a new program in place to talk about how do we deal with people on incomes and review all of our programs and services. So let's make sure that our programs designed to help people like income support and others are actually working. Are they actually doing what they were set to do up? I've called for a complete review of all our fees and taxes so that we start to look at why are we collecting these fees what are we doing? How can we make adjustments? All of those things, at the end of the day, will help people. A new poverty reduction strategy. We had a poverty reduction strategy in this province that was considered one of the best in the country. The Liberal government abandoned it. It's time to go back to a new poverty reduction strategy. Perhaps we can talk about how we index seniors' benefits. These are just some of the things that we need to be doing and looking at and how we can help people immediately. Well, thanks so much for coming in. Good luck in the race. Thank you. Thank you for having me.